Today, we are speaking with a gentleman who has served in our U.S. forces. He's an Army veteran and also was a veteran advocate. Now, in addition, after serving in the military, he continued serving by being an educator, a teacher with Teach for America, and then combining those two experiences and recruiting other veterans to become teachers for Teach for America. And all y'all know I'm an educator, so you know I was just eating that. Like, That's good. <laughs> So he's been mentioned in USA Today, CBS News, New York Post. I could go on and on. Um, but currently, you see that MM on him. Those of you on audio, you can't see him, but he's wearing, he's advertising, baby. He's got his MM, which stands for Mr. Motivation. This gentleman, and his name is Sean Murphy. He also is full on an entrepreneur now. And his Murphy Group does a variety of things. They work in real estate. Um, own properties, and I'll give him a chance to share a little bit about that later in the episode. And of course, y'all know I'll have show notes. So let's finally say hello to Mr. Sean Murphy. Welcome, Sean. Greetings, greetings. What's up, good people? Hope all is well. Um, like we said, my name is Sean Murphy. I go by Murph, or better known as Mr. Motivation, uh, Army vet, um, Brooklyn dude by way of Barbados. I uh, currently live out in Pennsylvania. You know, I um, live an altruistic life, so it's all been it's, it's always been about giving back, right? It's been grounded in my Army values. So education, I serve on three nonprofit boards, um, married to medicine, shouts out to wifey. Um, I'm a gymnastics, a gymnast dad. My daughter's a beast, future Olympian. Do you remember <laughs> Violet Rain? <laughs> okay. All right, <laughs> watch out, Biles. <laughs> you know what it is. So I'm excited to be here and just share um, a lot about, you know, what I'm doing. Um, like, like we mentioned, Mr. Motivation, I'm a motivational speaker. I'm a college professor, and I'm, I have a thing called Wake the Beast, right? It's an operation system, and I'll focus on military men helping them awaken the beast within, you know, by sharing with them strategies and systems and processes to help them with their transition from military service to uh, civilian life. So uh, I'll turn my back over to the host. This is the most this. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you. And I'm sure some of that will get touched on again. So let's go ahead and dive in. Yeah. First, what is the favorite song or movie either now or all time? Favorite movie? I'm going to have to go with a uh, Gladiator. Gladiator is 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 my thing. Um, the glad like so his character, one he 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 was a leader of leaders. He was grounded in like his men taking care of his team. He was in the trenches, you know. Um, always was worried about their welfare. Uh, led from the front, and I, I kind of exhibit those characteristics in my life. And I, I really, you know, just when he was dealing with crisis, he remained calm, cool. Still a leader, even though he was like, you know, in the slave space. And um, I really uh, admired that. So that's that's my movie I would pick. I, I can hear the resonance with the leadership. Totally. <laughs> um, it takes a leader to, you know, go in, do service twice in two different arenas mm -hmm. and then combine them in the way that you did. I left yeah. out folks that he actually quadrupled the participation of veterans in Teach for America during his stint there. So, um, yeah, I see you, leader. I see you. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Um, and I love Gla Gladiator. Um, yeah. You know, yeah, it's a, it's a good movie. It's a good movie. Let's talk about uh, childhood. What is a favorite moment from your childhood? I grew up in Brooklyn, right? And my mom's is from Barbados. And I remember I was dealing with, you know, so backstory, I got skipped from kindergarten to second. Then I get to like third grade, fourth grade, and I was just dealing with a lot of static from teachers and a lot of school leaders. They were trying to put me in special ed. Um, and it was just interesting. And my mom's like, you know what? You're going to Barbados. And, you know, this is a dude from the hood. And I go to Barbados and you got 90 degree weather year round, turquoise waters. It was really tranquil. And I got to like grow with my grandmoms and my dad extended family. So it was just a whole different world. And um, I think that was really, you know, impactful to experience that at, at, at that um, stage in my life. So um, from what grade to what grade were you in Barbados? Fifth and sixth grade. And then I came back. And then okay. I went into to middle school. Oh, yes. We call it junior high school in New York. So tell me about a moment while you're in Barbados. By the way, I've, 
um, vacationed in Barbados. I love the Bajan people. Yes. I love my time. Like, honestly, <laughs> I've been to multiple Caribbean islands and no hate on any other island, but Barbados was my favorite spot. My favorite. I feel you. Yes, yeah. I feel you. Yeah. So what's a favorite moment for you while you were in Barbados? So I'll tell you, so two things. One, um, so my, I'm, I'm the New Yorker, and I had a guy named Nicholas. He was a Canadian. And him and I, we, we just clicked, right? So we were kind of, you know, we, we pushed the limits on the rules, and it was really strict. Um, so I remember this one time, I was in the, the cadets. This should have been foreshadowing for me that I was going to the military. So the cadets, you know, I had to have my shoes shine. My uniform had to be pretty squared away. So I had this class, it would have been our ver version of the last class of the, um, the day, and I'm shining my shoes in the back, and the instructor comes up to me, he said, son, don't shine your shoes in my class. And I'm mm -hmm. like, no, I, I kiss my teeth, right? Oh, now, yeah. In, in Barbados, that's <laughs> like disrespectful. So uh -huh. they also were able to like, like, like beat us. So like Buddy had this- Corporal punishment. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right? They call it flogging. So Buddy grabbed my shoulder. He gave me one. And of course, I'm the hard-headed, stubborn American dude. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. I scoops again. So I got like two more. And I'm like, why, Sway? But um, I remember that because then I got, I was late. And I get to cadets and um, Mr. Mr. Monador, he made me go pick out 10 grains of sand because I was late. So that was just like a horrible day. But um, memorable. <laughs> Okay, see, now that is, a, of all the moments you could have shared, you didn't share about a favorite meal, you didn't share about no. playing, you no. shared getting in trouble. <laughs> yeah, let's right, see, this thing, I didn't get in trouble often, so that, that stands out, you know. I got that, okay. <laughs> I, you know what? I actually get that. I, um, I had a couple years, my family was in the Nation of Islam for a bit, and so okay. for a couple years, they took me out of public school, kind of similar. And I was at the 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 nation school, sure. and and it was lovely because there were black teachers there, and it was very empowering and in, in terms of the environment. Um, but I didn't do my homework one time, and I tell you, I ain't but three. It's so funny that you shared that because right now I'm like reliving that my the two memories that really stand out were one of the times where I went to reach into some girl's purse because she told me I could and they got <laughs> on me. You don't go in nobody else's purse. Blah, blah, blah. And I was like, dang, dang, dang. <laughs> right. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> and one time when they got, I got two slots in my hand and you're right. It's like, normally I'm like, I'm a good girl. I'm a good girl. Why are you on me? But you know what? Those stand out for me. I don't know about you, but they stand out for me because they stayed with me. I became one of those, get my homework done, mm -hmm. and I don't touch nobody's nothing. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Lesson learned. Right? So I get it. I get it. Um, 10 grains of sand. Girl, listen. you like, hey, how do you count that? You know, hands, palms, sweaty. It's crazy. Yeah. 10 grains. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right. <laughs> so... Um, <laughs> That's, that's, that's different. Uh, let's see. Next question is about accomplishments. I asked this question in two parts. First, the accomplishment that means the most to you personally. And then the accomplishment that when told is most likely to get the mm, or wow. So right. let's start with that first one. Which of your accomplishments, mm. which are many, is the one that means the most to you personally, Sean? So I'm going to go back to... Uh... Prestige Academy. It's the, the, the middle school I taught, all boys middle school, Wilmington, Del Delaware. And I had a student, I was a, spe a special ed student, uh, educator, and I had a student, R. Dub. R. Dub came to me, introvert. He didn't really speak. I'm like, R. Dub, you, you, what do you like? You like cheeseburger? He's like, uh. and So I had to like interpret stuff, right? But he was <laughs> on a third grade reading level, I believe. Okay. Okay. So, one of the things I did, I was like, all right, let me let me tap in with, you know, Mr. Marlin, social studies, Strawbridge in English, science and math, and see how is he in your class and what works if you get him to do anything. So we did like this collaborative approach, right? Mm -hmm. Then I was all in. I told Brick, I said, listen, 
if you meet me halfway, well, we go in the distance, right? So we talking about after school, weekends. And Brick, you know, he managed to commit to, 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 to doing this. And, you know, my, my ass, young lady, let me tell you, in a school year, boom, this brother grew seven or eight levels in reading. And I was like, you know, we're educators, but we're learning too. And, and exactly. for me, the takeaway was that sense of possibility. Like when you commit, when you lock in and you focus and put in that effort, you know, I, I tell people all the time, it has nothing to do with, you know, being smart and nothing, nothing to do with being like talent, focus and effort. And that's what we did. And to me, I say it's a personal, it, it was his personal accomplishment, but mine, because I'm just the guy that helped him get there. You know what I mean? So that's mm -hmm. one of my memorable personal accomplishments, you know, just, just seeing Brick House grow. And oh, let me tell you the social part. Next year, you couldn't shut Buddy up. He was a social <laughs> butterfly. Like, I'm talking about Brick. Come on, time out. Come on, bro. Focus. And it's just, it was just so day and night. Like, Buddy just yeah. switched up. And it's like, yo. But see, what, what it was, was we poured into him. We said, mm -hmm. Brick, like, your voice needs to be heard. You got a story. Like, share it. I mean, and he went, he took that and ran with it. But I was fine with that. So that's, that's what I would uh, go with for my personal accomplishment. Yeah, I love that as an yeah. educator, especially, but you basically by elevating his reading level, you know, because when your reading level is low, you feel like something, you know, mm -hmm. and I, I know this from observing, right? And right. they're shyer, they, they just feel as if they don't quite, they don't, they're not up to snuff, right? right. Well, and so they them, don't want right. to be on, yeah, they don't want to be on <laughs> class, they don't want to draw any attention because they don't mm -hmm. want to any, they don't, they fear being found out that they are quote unquote substandard. Sure. But once their reading level goes up, and if you got him up eight levels, that means you left him higher than his grade. Hello. Right? Hello. And yeah. so he's like, I don't know if y'all know, but I'm the I'm the big man on campus. Anybody want to talk to me? <laughs> that is amazing. That is yeah. that is beautiful. That is trans. That is transformative. So, transformative, yeah, I right. acknowledge you for contributing transformation to that child. Like, mm -hmm. he will, he is a new man, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. Um, um, no wonder you end up uh, recruiting if that was one of the, just <laughs> one of the experiences you had, right? Yeah. Seriously. You know, it's funny you say that, right? So, I, 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 I didn't forget about part two. But yeah, no, part, no worries. I would be at, um, you know, at Teach for America in my recruiting role, I'd be at these, um, I remember the Service Academy Career Fair, right? And you got the Googles, the Yahoos, the, you know, the, the big wigs. And I'm the only nonprofit Teach for America. Let me tell you, I had a line, because see, I'm a storyteller. And I get right. to telling stories about, you know, I remember one female, she was an Air Force, and her dad was so impacted. He's an Air Force he was an Air Force uh, retiree. He mm -hmm. loved what she was doing in the class so much that he joined the court. What? You know, Navy SEALs that, that, that decide to, you know what, I, I want to go teach math. Like, this was the type of stories we had to tell. So when I was in, out and about, I didn't feel no kind of way. Like, listen, we, we, we got about maybe thirty to 40000 in salary to give you. But let me tell you how you're going to be fulfilled. You know what I'm saying? So, and, and that's a big thing, especially... In the space of military service, I remember when I transitioned out, I was, it was such a void, you know, I was in teaching, I was in the military, and you don't realize that, you know, that sense of service is a big thing. And it wasn't until I got, I started, I joined the board, and I was doing board service, and then um, I got pulled into being a, a professor, and then it was like, oh, I'm in my space. You know what I mean? But so so that's a thing. And and that was my my pitch, if you would, when I was going after, you know, high level uh, military personnel. So first of all, I, I just want to thank you for presencing myself and I would think at least maybe one other listener to how much um, the people who go into our military are so often people of service. And, you know, yeah. I, I did have a gentleman who was on uh, recently, and we were talking about how in a lot of cases, people of color are recruited for the military 
in, in terms of sharing the benefits. Like, you know, mm-hmm. we know you didn't get prepared in high school, but check this out. <laughs> right, 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 right. A place where you can, right? Um, and in some ways, you know, that can feel like, wow, you know, the people of color are over, overrepresented in a career that if we did go to a war, right? And there's this whole mm-hmm. love with Ukraine as you and I are speaking, um, oh. Russia in Ukraine, um, uh, or on the outskirts of, let me clarify that. Um, and so, you know, we were talking about that, but at the same time, the thing that I just got present to is that whether you enter the military with the intention of being of service or as just an opportunity, that where you're left is the importance of being of service. And so I love, mm-hmm. I love that you shared that because it, I, I just love that you did. Yeah, um, no, 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 appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, thank you. And thank um, you for your service. Oh man, proud, proud. I um, I, I'll dive into the professional. So I love every bit of teaching in, in my middle school. Like my boys, that that was it. I could, I could talk about them for, for hours. But um, the, I hit my three years. My second year, I got you know, Teach for America hits you up and they say, hey, you know, two years is coming to an end. What's next for you? And I was like, well, you know, I'm going to stay in the classroom, but I really think we should be focused on recruiting, you know, veterans to, to come into the classroom. And at the time, it wasn't a thing for the R org. Mm-hmm. Fast forward a year later, they hit me up and say, oh, sure, we got an opportunity. Are you interested? So I jump on it. And I know my students didn't really like that because I was leaving. Uh, and, and for me, I saw an opportunity. So now when I'm teaching my middle school students, I'm impacting them, probably mm-hmm. their siblings, Maybe they're friends and probably parents, right? Yep. When I go into recruiting other veterans like myself to teach across the nation, my impact is that much greater, right? Mm-hmm. And that was the vision I had. And it's kind of how I, you know, share with them what my transition would look like. So I get into that, and it's funny. I, I'm, I'm a visionary, and I dream big. I remember my first year, we, we launched the initiative. And we get called uh, to D.C. to brief, um, uh, who was it? I think it was the chief of staff, right, or what we were doing. So mm-hmm. then fast forward, I told my girl, I said, listen, I got to get to the White House. I'm getting to the White House this year. I, said, I don't know how, but I'm getting in the White House. And I get this call from Michelle Obama's speechwriter. He's like, hey, Sean, listen, um, y- your story came across our desk, and Michelle Obama wants to recognize you for your work. And I'm like, Michelle who? Right? So, buddy, like, you know, President, I said, oh, so crazy. Fast forward, I get to the White House to be recognized for this work we're doing nationwide in the space of bringing veterans into the classroom and asking them to continue to serve. And so so that was one of my things when you talk about professional accomplishments. Super dope. Here I am um, on CNN, you know, Michelle Obama was like, Staff Sergeant Murphy, and then People are like, is that Photoshop? Like, you can't Photoshop video, buddy. You know, this is real life. And the first thing I thought about was my students who I left, right, physically to go do this work. And then that work took me into, you know, to, to bigger, better places. But I'm ultimately representing them and the families that I served and continue to serve. So that's the one that people be like, oh, oh okay. Oh, you know? Got you. Got you. Yeah, because I'm like, Ooh, White House. And I love that you declared it. You know, oh. hey, this, hey, I'm going to tell you where I'm, where, where I'm going We're and going. then have that happen. So yes, kudos oh, yeah. for being oh, yeah. a man of power. Oh, yeah. Excellent. Yeah. <laughs> um, all right. Well, we got both of those in. Let's talk about words. Um, oh, actually, there's just one more thing. You know, yeah. when you said that you got, got a Navy SEAL in the classroom, I'm mm-hmm. like, dang. Oh man, I would love to have been in a class with somebody yes, like that. You know what I'm, I'm like? I'm hey, I think that class is cool. I bet he'd be like doing all kind of stuff and telling them little <laughs> things. Hey, I feel like I missed out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, and, 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 and the list goes on from SAR majors to lieutenant colonels and yeah. even like uh, 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 E4 who cleared landmines for a living. You're like, I just clear landmines. Well, well no, nobody, you, your attention to detail is through the roof because you're here to tell this story. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's a big deal. You know, <laughs> I, lo- I love how you said, you know, your attention to detail because right now I'm like, oh my gosh, like in a classroom, oh my, I bet his lesson plans are off the hook. <laughs> <laughs> 
Oh, yeah. Oh, right? Yeah. Awesome. All right. Well, let's talk about words. What is a favorite quote, saying, metaphor, or book? And why? I'm a quote guy, right? So the thing is, a see, see a man as he is, uh, he will remain as he is. See a man as he could be, and he will grow to be what he should be. Mm, that's that's one of my... That's one of my, my my favorite ones. And I'll tell you why. Like when I meet people, you know, like I said, I live a life of service and I listen to you and I hear where you at and I think, you know, what do you, where you want to go? And my first thing is how can I help you get to that next level? Like I'm here today for a reason. I don't know why we cross paths, but I'm, and a lot of times people don't know, you know, the, the strengths, the gifts that they have within. So one of my gifts is the ability to see that, help you unearth it, and then when it's ap applicable, monetize it, and then you go live in your purpose. You know what I mean? So that's the only reason why this quote speaks to me. Oh, I love that quote. It's awesome. Um, and so what educators do, and not just educators, counselors, you know, coaches, all kind of folks. Um, all right. Well, now I'll ask, what is a conversation moment or event? that either had uh, a significant impact on your life or it changed the trajectory of your life? So going to the gym, backstory, I'm in um, Fort Leonard, Missouri. I was a ball player. I talk a lot of trash, heavy, heavy trash talker. And there was this Marine, he's towering over me. I'm 6'1", and Buddy's tall over me, right? And I'll be going at him. We talking cash, money, trash. And mind you, I joined the military at 19. I was a young boy, you know. So this guy. Now, when you say, I, hold on. When you say you're at the gym, is this while you're in the military? Is this the. Oh, yeah, yeah. The, I'm on base. I'm on base. Okay, okay. All right. Go ahead. Go ahead. I just want to so, make sure I was with you. Oh, okay. no, yeah, definitely. So we be talking trash. And somehow he and I is trash talking. And then we like, yo, you cool. I'm cool. Let's hang out. And he took me out, like, buddy's buku older than me. You know, when he hear this, he probably going to be like, buku older? But <laughs> he was much older than me. So he took on the role as my big brother almost. And, you know, one would say, like, you know, like, why? You know, but I never questioned it. I just ran with it. And I remember he would take me wherever he went. And I was a young private. I didn't have no money. He was like, we going to South Carolina. I'm like, how, Sway? He's like, come on, just get, your, just get stuff together. And I'm, I, when you talk about, so anytime I give talks, I talk about, you know, giving people their roses when they can smell them, right? And anytime I talk, he usually comes up. I remember I, I wanted to get out of the military. I was like, I'm over this. This is whack. He like, what you going to do? I said, I'm going back to school. He like, boy, you ain't even do school and you in the military and it's, it's, it's available to you. He said, this is what you going to do. You gonna go realist? Fix your, your camis. He mail here's the Marines. He call them camis. You okay. know, get them, get them, pol polish your boots, get your stuff squared away, go to the board and get promoted. I don't know why, because I was a stubborn dude, but when KC spoke, I, I listened, right? Mm -hmm. And I went and I did exactly what he, you know, instructed me to do. And I'm going to tell you, you know, you talk about uh, uh, quantum moments, those moments when you reflect back and you're like, wow, this happened and my life went on this trajectory. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? And I think meeting him and then it just developing into like a you know relationship and a, a big brotherhood. And, you know, I was the best man at his wedding. He's the best man at my wedding. He's wow. godfather to my two kids. And I remember he, you know, we was in New York and he told my mom, she said, I got him, you know, and uh, this is extended, but I had, I got injured on uh, active duty. And at the time, I know I couldn't afford to fly my mom's home to, mm -hmm. to, to hold me down. Yeah. And you know who was there? Big bro. He came, picked me up. And let me tell you, that's my G, you know, and, and, and yes. when you talk about, so what I do, I pay it forward. So mm -hmm. there's some people I meet in life and I, I just take care of whatever they need to be taken care of, you know? And they're like, well, why are you looking out for me? And, and it's bigger than just you and your situation. I know someone looked out for me. You know what I'm yeah. saying? So it's yeah. nothing to pay it forward. 
you know? Yeah. Yeah. I love that. I mean, honestly, I got a little bit of a chill there just because mm. I, I believe we, there are no accidents in timing. There's no such mm. thing as coincidence. What we call coincidence is God. <laughs> working. God, that boy right? working. Right. He just, everything's lined up. Universe mm. is um, conspiring for your success. Mm. And we go, well, isn't that interesting how that happened? No. Mm. <laughs> and right. I will also give credit to the other side for those people who are like, I don't really believe in God. I don't know about what you're saying. Well, then mm. let's take it the other way. Let me also appreciate your willingness to take advantage of that opportunity, right? Mm. Because there's you know, what the universe God places before you. And then there's being willing to accept it, take exactly. advantage of it. And I did say, take advantage, take advantage right? Yeah. And, and, and allow yeah. it to do what it's there to do. And so I love that you and him met and both of you saw the opportunity, the possibility that was that friendship, that mentorship. And now, mm -hmm. you know, here, yeah. here, here you guys are. I mean, yeah. like lifelong buddies. <laughs> exactly. That's awesome. Oh, yeah. Um, let's go to, oh yeah. And he is going to be mad when you, when he hears. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <geez. laughs> I, and I, I added that just to make it worse. <laughs> right. Right. <clears throat> um, let's talk about, um, your experiences as a black man. So this question is, what is a moment that either highlights or in some way signifies your experience as a black man in the United States? Yeah, great, great, great question. And I go back, I touched on this a little earlier. If I look at my third and fourth grade year, so mind you, you know, and I got skipped from kindergarten mm -hmm. to second, and I get to mm -hmm. third and fourth grade, and they're telling me, you know, I need to be in special ed. And, you know, I remember back then, like, that was the norm. You know, young black boys, you know, a little hyper, they be like, you know, it was the pipeline of special ed. Yes, and then, yes, it back is. Then, yes, it was. You mm -hmm. locked in till you graduate in special mm -hmm. ed, right? Mm -hmm. And I just, I, I, fast forward as an educator, I realized I was smart, so I needed more advanced work, or mm -hmm. I needed a job to go, go to the student that was struggling. I needed to be invested, right? Mm -hmm. But the teachers didn't use those type of strategies. It was just like they would do what was I was on this schedule every 30 minutes. I had like a 30 minute break. You know what I'm saying? But mm -hmm. thankfully, I picked things up quick, you know, and what it did, it didn't sour me. Right. The education system, whatnot. I saw an opportunity to become the educator I didn't see growing up. Mm -hmm. And then when Teach for America came, um, my um, the female in my life at the time, no coincidences. Right. We met. She's in education. I would have never probably known about Teach for America. And then I went into this space. So that's one of the things. And I vowed, let me tell you something. I, and ironically enough, I became a special ed teacher. Mm -hmm. So I was like, I need to make special ed like cool. Like take that stigma away, right? Funny story. <laughs> yeah. So the boy is on the bus, right? And this, this something breaks out. And, and, and Malik's like, you know, they're just mad because they're not the Rock Boys. And they're like, what the Rock Boys? Hey, Rock Boys is a gang, and we we cool. I'm like, so I hear this story. So what I did, I called my spe special ed students or scholars Rock Boys. So I would walk into the classroom, Rock Boys, we out. So regular ed students wanted to be Rock Boys because you know, <laughs> this, is, this is my life. But we took that away. Like, what do you mean you special ed? Hey, young brother. We we gonna work through some things. You may have a challenge here or there, but there's mm -hmm. an opportunity for us to be great, right? And outwork this yep. thing. So that that's that's my story on, on that question. <laughs> ooh, ooh. Uh, you know, mm, I have a couple things to say on that. First of all, <laughs> look, I get that. First of all, <laughs> but you know what? Um, so I love what you did with that, and. Um, one of the things, just speaking to your experience as a third and fourth grader in special ed, um, the truth of that as a, um, you know, as a common thing that would happen to young people of color in school. And it, it had to do with the fact that you have a culture clash, right? And so mm -hmm. teachers who don't understand, you know, it's not, 
I'm not trying to be disrespectful. And I'm like, hey, can I? Can I? No, me. Yeah. Right. It's like that's just and they're like, that's not how we do it. Just raise your hand like this, Johnny, and just wait. <laughs> right. And so then the, literally there are kids who just, you know, no, no, come on. No, me. No, me. Right. And then that's like, OK, see, you're being defiant. And it was just this whole craziness. Right. Um, so first of all, just acknowledging that that and, and fortunately, there is so much better teacher training than when you yeah. were young. Right. Like it, it's just getting better and better and better. Yeah. Um, but then the other thing is, I love how you just, you know, basically told that truth about how you can make anything cool. And mm. I, I, you know, I, I hate being one of those people. Like my whole thing is about listening. And right now I'm talking to you, but you're like in education. So I'm like, I got a story too. I got a story too. <laughs> but right. there are these kids, right? But there are these kids, man, this kid got on my last nerve. Oh, my <laughs> last nerve. Him and his two friends, they were loud, talkative, wouldn't right. shut up. So they go to this human relations camp. All I'm going to say is three days, did some miracles. They came back and they walked around campus talking about, we the scholars, we scholars. Right. And they literally were holding it down. And it was just a, a, a complete shift. And I, mm. I add that in on top of what you share, just to say, if you're an educator listening, or you just someone who see a bunch of kids and you think, oh, those boys, they so loud, they so crazy, they so bad. You know what? They're just looking for a place to be channeled into something that matters right, right. Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. yep so thank you yeah. um no doubt let me ask you this um tell me about any interactions you've had with law enforcement you yeah yeah that. or before, yeah whatever but before i do that i um my my battery my camera is dying so we may have okay. to go to audio only that's cool. okay yeah that's yeah. fine okay cool okay mm -hmm. Yeah, okay, right. I'm gonna I'm gonna go off camera too because I'm gonna feel weird staring and looking at this. Because <laughs> <Hey, hey. laughs> I'm staring at black, right? right? <laughs> All right, go ahead. Here we okay, go. Okay, go ahead. All right, we can unplug. All um, right. Um. So. Yeah. Uh, law enforcement. So I thought of two things came to mind. Right. I remember. I was in the park. I never, I'm, I'm from Brownsville. Brownsville, New York, you know, the hood. And, you know, it was always live. And I'm leaving the park. I, I'm no shirt, basketball in my hand. I'm one of my homie and I'm like sweating, right? I mean, profusely. And I'm walking. And the police pull up. They're like, hey, hey son, wh where are you coming from? And I'm thinking, you know, I was a pretty sarcastic dude. But a memory came to me, right? I remember being in my window watching the older, o older dudes on the stoop and the police pulled up and, and they said something, and, but my boys are smart and they would, you know, voice their sarcasm. And let me tell you, two more cars pulled around. They got pounced out, pulled away, cuffed, mm -hmm. took to jail. So I, I just played that back in my mind and I just said, officer, I just left the park. Um, I live right there. And he said, what is right there? And I gave him the address. And then I just proceeded on. So that, 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 that's one encounter that, that came to mind. And the other one was I was, I was home on leave from um, the military, headed to Korea, home for 30 days. And I went up to Binghamton, where I went to school initially. And I don't know, out of nowhere, this car hops the curb, guns is drawn. I'm like, hold up. You know, and that, they're like, you fit the description of this one fugitive. I said, hey, buddy, in my back pocket is my DA-31, which is a leave form showing I'm leaving from Fort Hood, Texas in transit to Weejambu, Korea. <laughs> you can pull mm -hmm. it out, you know? Mm -hmm. And just thankfully, you know, that I had the, the document on me. And, you know, if, if I could extend on that, I, I talk Please. to people and a lot of times, like, people just don't know as a black man what would you go through, right? So, like, when I go to anywhere, gas station, I get receipts. And then, mm. you know, I'm a receipt collector because if I get stopped, buddy can't tell me I was across town. No, I was at the Sunoco up the block at, at, at 619, you know? Wow. And, 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 and that's the normal reps I got to do in my life. And, mm. I, you know, I share that and people like, Wow, really? I'm like, yeah, this is this is because the if I don't, then I gotta go get fingerprinted and you know go through the whole whole, whole nine. And and one of the things I'm 
I think we take for granted that I just love, you know, like, of course, I'm an educator. I sit on boards. I, I, I coach. So, I, or, like, all my, um, <clears throat> you know, background check, FBI, state, child abuse. I'm good. And, you know, it's just, it's a great feeling, you know mm -hmm. what I mean, T to know yeah. that, you know, your prints are clean, you know. Yeah. Wow. You know, it's so funny. I, when you, is, is, you know, I can't help but, you know, my mind, like every other humans, jumps ahead and thinks they know what's coming, right? So when you mentioned the receipts, I was like, oh, yeah, I totally get it. Yeah, you want to make sure you don't get stopped and somebody say you stole something. And then when I realized what you were really saying, that this is a way to be able to show where you've been and basically a, a collection of alibi. <laughs> right, right. Right? Wow. <laughs> I, I'm also, I have to tell you, I'm also kind of like impressed and taking notes <laughs> because, you know, there might be people who've never thought about that, but I, I'm just saying like, you know, you know, it, it's a weird thing to say out loud, but you know, cause I, I'm not a brother, but if I was a brother, I'd like to think I would hear that. And mm. I would be like, okay, if I, especially if I went out of town somewhere, and in fact, never mind being a brother, like as an African-American, if I'm ever in a location where it's not as familiar to me and, mm. and maybe they got a reputation for being a little harsh with people of color, like, I love that. I love that. Like, let me just keep all my receipts. Like, I can tell you where I was. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that is smart. What? Okay, I have to ask you. Because um, I talked to, you know, I've talked to a few brothers now. This is the first time I'm hearing that. Is that, one, is that something that you've heard other brothers talk about? And two, whether it is or not, where where did you in particular come up with that? Yeah, yeah. I actually, I haven't really heard many brothers talk about it. Um and, you know, something just told me to start sharing that. And maybe it's a nugget, you know. Where did I it come, is. Yeah, you know, where did I come up with it? You know, it's funny. I'm, I'm, I've always been, like, kind of a chess player, like, thinking steps ahead. And it's like, all right, if this happens, what can I do to deter that outcome? You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and, and, and it just don't – because in the military, I used to drive across country. I'm in Texas, and I'm all kinds of places. And – getting pulled over as a brother kind of was like the, the a, a norm of mine. And, mm. um, you know, I just keep my, my wallet is right on the console. I'm not reaching nowhere. Um, it, it's just, yeah, I just kind of just picked it up. So I, I started sharing it, you know, especially with my high schoolers and uh, my, my collegiate students. I, I share with them and like, this is a thing. I'm a receipt collector, you know, when I'm on, when I'm out and about. <clears throat> Well, I just want to say, you know, I'm a stand for a world where that's not necessary. And mm. until we're in that world, I think that's brilliant. Mm -hmm. um, I know. So I've heard so many of the stories that brothers have shared in answer to that question about law enforcement, where I mean, you know, you fit the description. That's you know, that should be a hashtag, <laughs> you know, YFTD. <laughs> And, you know, and that's a nervous laughter, by the way. Mm -hmm. um, and, oh, yeah. and so the idea of having something that in in case one was stopped on mm -hmm. a, you know, YFTD, that you could just be like, OK, well, here's, you know, first I was here. I mean, now here's this other here. I was here. And they'd be like, you know what, bro? You know what? Go. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. <laughs> that was definitely a nugget. Keep sharing, yes, please. Are. Yes. <clears throat> Um, so, Sean, this question allows you to imagine that the United States is someone that you can speak to. She's a woman and mm -hmm. she can be a mother, a lover, a stranger, a neighbor, a friend, you call it. If the United States was a woman, what would you say to her? Yeah, this is a good one. Um, I think I'd say Mad Madam USA, uh, physical, sexual, psychological and emotional Abuse and trauma is what we, as in my people, experience on your watch. Mm -hmm. um, and all we did was contribute to the growth and greatness. Yet, you know, all this occurred and the cycle continues. Why? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I got the whole world of that. It was short and sweet, but quite clear and profound in that, mm -hmm. you know, Basically, what I hear you saying is 
I'm listening. <laughs> mm, right. Right. Yeah. All right. I think I think we all get the world of that. Nothing else to say. Um, let's talk about love. And what is a moment that mm. exemplifies love in a non-familial situation? This is a good question. So when, when I was stationed in, 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 in Missouri, Fort Leonard, with, on the side, I was also like a party planner. You know, I was, you know, at one point doing bringing artists and stuff. And it, it, this one particular time, I did a fashion show. And it was, it was dope. It was at a local club. And I was there enjoying the event, but I couldn't really enjoy it because I was looking at the numbers and the ticket sales because I knew I still had uh, people I owed, right? Mm -hmm. So the event happened and the crowd, they, they thoroughly enjoyed it. It was dope. And uh, at the end, I was just at the top in the balcony, but I had a, I had to have kind of like a scowl or a look that was like, why is Murph not happy right now? So my man came up to me saying, Murph, what's up? You good? I said, homie. I'm down. I want to say it was either a thousand or two thousand mm -hmm. dollars, and my it's one a.m. in Fort Leonard, Missouri, right? So mm -hmm. without skipping a beat, my boy said, "Murph, be right back." And I, I just, I just, what I'm gonna do? I just wait, right? So they mm -hmm. came back, hand me an envelope, go handle what you gotta handle, and I'll tell you why that for me. That like love, because one, I'm, I'm a lot of times, oftentimes, I'm the one like there for people, helping out, doing X, Y, and Z, and yeah. I don't ask for nothing, for real, for real, from from of my people. You know what I'm saying? I'll just yeah. do it out. I'll figure it out. And in that moment, I mean, my man, he ain't skip a beat. Let me tell you, to this day, it was it was, it was kid. It was three of them: kid, Domega, I want to say forty and Eans. Um, I don't know if I would pay them back. I got a cold. <laughs> <laughs> but in, in that moment, like, I was like, yo, my boys love me. And I, and that's just what I thought. And, and I would go to the end of the earth for them. And, you know, and this is another example of how I go hard for people. You know what I'm saying? That, you know, that in my space that I want to see do well. Because in, in times like that, there was someone there for me, you know, yep. um, and, and, and when you ask this, you know, I don't know if I ever told this story, so I was like a non-familiar moment. This ain't my family, but we fam, you know. So, yeah, I, I, I'll, I'll pause there. I love that. I love it. I, I hear that, um, you know, there are some people who are in the habit of being generous. And I won't say coming to the rescue because that sounds kind of weird, but mm -hmm. we're um, people who are in the habit of being a uh, reliable and dependable mm. and someone that can be counted on, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. And a lot of times those very people don't ever ask for much because they're in the habit of being accountable to others or responsible for or dependable by others. And so I love that you allowed them to um, be that for you. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And Boy, you yeah. said you're going to call and check in and, and, you know, I wonder if I pay them back for it. And I, you know, I'm not them. And, you know, I, for all I know, they might be like, yeah, that'd be good. But I think personally, like, I'm just left with that they wanted it. They gave it as a gift of love. That's how yeah. it sounds to me. Yeah. Um, yeah. We be talking, what's this, 2000 maybe? Wow. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's a gift of love. Yeah. You just write yeah. them a thank you note. <laughs> <laughs> Better yet, just send them this. <laughs> I'm like, yo, listen to this. Tune in. Tap in. Right, right. Ooh. Excellent. Oh, yeah. Well, now I'll ask you. <laughs> if you were granted five hours mm. to spend with a brother, a black man, living or dead, from anywhere, who would you choose? Mm -hmm. And either what would you talk about or what would you do? Yeah, yeah. So, you know, I'm a Brooklyn dude, so I'm a huge fan of my, my Brooklyn billionaire boy, Jay-Z. Um, so I, I would choose Jay, a.k.a. Sean Carter. Um, mm. 
Now, in these five hours, I, I would, you know, talk to him about, you know, one, who I am, you know, high level, my journey, my path. So he just kind of get like a back backstory, where I am in life, like what am I doing, the projects, what's what I have going on now at this, at this moment, uh, why I'm here, you know, so he can kind of get a sense of, you know, my purpose, you know, which is expansion, impacting the world, you know, crossing continental lines. I also share where I aspire to be in terms of my vision, my big goals, right? So mm -hmm. I would front load that. And then my ask of him would be like, you know, based on his experience, his knowledge base, as it, to, as it relates to where I aspire to be, what should my next five moves be? Ooh. Yeah. I like that. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. You know what I like about you? Ma'am. You just all about the mentoring. Like you are willing to be a mentor and you're willing to be mentored. Like mm -hmm. that's what I got from what you would, you know, what those five hours with Jay-Z would be. It would sure. be you allowing him to be a mentor, requesting mm -hmm. of him to be a mentor. Um, and I think any listener knows that all that would happen from that is one, you would take those five, you would make those five steps. <laughs> and Hello. then you would, you would use that to become a mentor to others. Yeah, like it's exactly. so super clear. And I love that Mr. Motivation. Now I see, you know what, see, I didn't even, we, we didn't even like get you to go all into that, but you see how, who you are was just revealed in the course of this. You are mm. Mr. Motivation. <laughs> mm, I, like that. I love that. Yes. Um, so this last question is really about the, the, this conversation itself. So now Sean, that you've participated in this conversation, what did you get for yourself personally? out of participating in this conversation? Well, one of the things that, that immediately jumps out is, cause I'm always like on the go, moving, pointing other people. And I tell people this, but you know, sometimes the words of the advisor seldom reaches his own ear, right? <laughs> um, mm -hmm. But I have to like reflect and in, 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 in this talk, I had to like reflect and dig deep. I had to go on my past and my wow, you know, how does this connect and, and why did this happen and what was the motive behind this? You know, so I did, you know, self-reflect and learning more about me. And then the dots got connected like this happened. And maybe 15 years later, this happened. But, you know, the why was back here. Um, mm. So I appreciate, you know, one, you give me the space to share my story and two, the questions that uh, you curated that, you know, ultimately was able to unearth my truths that, you know, helped me in a therapeutic sense. And I hope that, you know, with the listeners out there, um, you know, everything I say may not be for you, but, you know, remember, it only takes one thing to change everything. Mm. True, true. Well, I am always left with a... Um, you know, a view or, a, you know, just kind of like some key things that stand out about each guest that I interview, because I have the privilege of listening to you talk about these things, um, but I don't have a background with you. So I get to just hear what's right there. Mm -hmm. And I have to say, when I see that MM, I really am seeing, and I, I'm not taking away from Mr. Motivation, because that is you, but I got to say, I'm seeing Mr. Mentor. Mr. Mentor, <laughs> um, just the way that you recruited other veterans in to make a difference. And even with the way that you spoke about the reach, like you, you made the difference in the classroom and then you went out and you meant you, in a sense, mentored in the sense of recruiting, right? Like there's a form of mentorship in that. And so in recruiting these other veterans and then knowing that you're sending mentors out to mm. more students, right? Mm -hmm. And so I just love that that is a key part of who you are and may you continue to be so and may others see your example of mentorship and take it on in any and as many areas of their life as they can. 
Thank you, ma'am. <laughs> oh, yes. And um, always at the end, I know that um, my listeners know there'll be, you know, links to uh, all of your info in the show notes. But in case someone is maybe um, in the car or riding a bike or doing whatever mm-hmm. they're doing, just so they could hear where to where to reach you. Um, right. And they can always go to the show notes later. But could right. you just tell them a little bit about how to reach you? Yeah, definitely. Um, you got a few ways you can reach me. One website is www. Mr. M I S T E R dash motivation.com. Um, I didn't mention this, but I just I became a recording artist last year and I, I released a single entitled Why. Um, mm. So you can go to www.mrmotivationmusic.com. That's M I S T E R motivationmusic.com and uh, get access to that. We're streaming on all platforms. On IG, it's Mr. Motivation, M-I-S-T-E-R. Motivation has, uh, instead of the O's, it's zeros. Um, Mm -hmm. And um, I'm on Twitter, Sean L. Murphy, S-H-A-U-N L. Murphy. Um, I would love to to connect with you, break bread, and and, then share some insight. Um, But, yeah, I'm excited. Excellent. (laughs) Excellent.